Look, Josh actually came outside today for once. Isn't that amazing? Josh never goes outside. It's really weird when you talk about yourself in third person. It's also really weird filming outside in general because a bunch of people are walking by at this park looking at me in a tripod. All right, welcome to the first flight log. I'm gonna post these maybe once a week on Saturdays, which is today. I'm gonna to try to keep them educational, but I wanna make them fun too. I end up asking my instructors like a lot of dumb questions that I think people might be curious about, but just don't have anyone to ask. And so I'm here to ask those questions for you. If you got any dumb or entertaining questions you wanna know about airplanes and stuff, let me know. Let's start off with what was the scariest thing about learning how to fly. Um, it was taxiing around the airport, just. <laughs> Just driving the airplane around the airport before you're about to take off. That was the scariest part. I thought it was gonna be practice stalling the airplane. I thought it was gonna be turning the plane too sharp or doing something like that. But the plane basically flies itself. You just make sure that it stays level and goes where you need it to go. It's pretty safe. You know, you have a higher chance of getting into a wreck or something happening when you when you drive a car. I think maybe the only thing that people really get scared about is like they have a fear of heights so when you look out the window you feel like your stomach drop but I've never really experienced that. The first thing that you learn is how to walk around the airplane and check to make sure everything is good, all the avionics work, all the electronics work. I'm supposed to tell you about the flight plan. Yeah, just tell you what we're gonna so do. So we're gonna do uh, power on stall, power off stall, and slow flight stalls. Like how am I doing on this? Am I doing okay on this? Okay. Throttles one fourth so yeah, like right there. Yeah. Okay. I'm still waiting on to learn how to use the radio because right now, every time I want to do something, he has to do the radio. So I learned how to take off and land yesterday when you're, when you're driving the airplane. When you're riding the airplane around the airport getting ready to take off, you don't use your hands at all. Obviously the yoke, the, the wheel basically doesn't work when you're on the ground until you get up to a certain amount of speed. So you just have these pedals and you just push your feet left and right if you want to turn it. But those pedals also have brakes on them. So if you push your toes forward, you touch the brakes and you can feel the plane kind of jolt forward a little bit. And that was a little scary at first because my biggest fear was like, I was gonna go too fast and then I was gonna try to turn the plane. But when I pressed my foot forward, you have like a tendency to push your toe forward as well. I thought I was gonna tap the brakes and like spin the plane when it was going too fast. After we got into the air, my legs were still super tensed up from like being afraid of pushing too much on the pedals that it took me like five minutes to realize we're not on the ground anymore and then I finally relaxed my leg muscles. So I got like an inadvertent leg day. Seriously, my legs are sore just because they were so tense because I was afraid I was gonna push the pedals and spin the plane on takeoff or something like that. We also did stalls. So if you don't know what a stall is, it's basically when you don't have any more lift. Most people think, well, if you slow the plane down enough, the plane's gonna stall and that's actually not really how it works. There's a, there's a minimum amount of speed that the plane needs to be able to generate enough lift to, to lift the plane up but generally the way that stalls work is if your angle of attack is too high. If you take the plane and you pitch it up way too much then you're gonna disrupt the airflow over the wing and it's gonna create these little rotors and you're not gonna have lift anymore and so the plane wants to lean back forward and go down and you really have to try to stall the plane because you get a lot of warnings when it comes to stalling the plane. So there's a stall horn that some planes have, our plane did, before you're about to stall, it goes off in the cockpit, it's super loud. It's like Jim Carrey making an annoying noise in like Ace Ventura or something like that. That's what it sounds like in the cockpit. <laughs> also, some planes will start shaking the stick in your hand to like, hey, let go. Tilt the, tilt the nose down, give it some, give it some airflow over the wings. And then also the, the entire plane starts to like shake a little bit. Like there's a lot of warnings. You really have to try to stall an airplane. There are a couple cases where you could do it accidentally just because you're going already at like the minimum flight speed needed. 
So if you're like coming into land and you turn and then you hit the rudder while you're turning at a super low speed already, you don't have a lot of room to play with because you're just gonna hit that minimum stall speed just for the plane to be in the air. If you're just flying the airplane and, and it starts to stall, just push it back down, no problem. What most people do instinctually is they're like, oh, we're going down, let me pull up. And so they stall the plane again and they still hold it and then it, it doesn't have any lift. So then you go into a nosedive. And, and I guess a lot of people get really scared with the stall feeling. Kind of feels like zero G for a moment. We go up and then you come back down. So here are some questions that you probably are asking or I guess maybe curious about. Where am I doing it? The, the outfit that I'm doing it with is called Randon. Randon, it's like random, like random number generator, but instead of an M on the end of the word, it's an N, like Randon. It's in um, West Jordan, Utah basically. So it's way over there, you could see it from here, but you can't, but I can. It's a lot of gas in my Jeep, to be honest. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a 25 minute drive. and. Every time I drive there, it's like a quarter of a tank, but it's it's worth it. It'll be worth it. My instructor is Nick. He wants to do the commercial route. Normally, you get a private pilot's license, then you become an instructor, and then you go the commercial route. But to do commercial and fly jets and regional planes like that, you have to have 1,500 hours to get into it. And so you don't end up with 1,500 hours after you get your pilot's license. That's not how it works at all. Uh, what exactly am I flying? I'm flying a Piper Archer from the 1970s. Some of the interiors are a little bit you know, rugged, but student use, you know, it's being used all day. And then some of them are actually pretty nice. I could see myself flying around in a Piper Archer. It seats four. It's a pretty decent little plane. Um, it's low wing. If I had a choice on what kind of aircraft I would get, it would probably be a Kit Fox like Trent Palmer flies because bush flying is the dream. Just land up here on a mountaintop somewhere, go camp, wake up the next morning, pack it all away, and then just fly off the mountain and go back home. So that's like the dream. Uh, if you're curious, the Piper Archer holds 50 gallons of fuel, 25 gallons on each wing. Gas costs $5.15 per gallon. A lot of people want to know how far you can go in that little plane, and it's not really distance, um, it's more about air time. So you can get about five and a half hours in the Piper Archer that we're flying in. However far you can get on five and a half hours is really up to you, the route you take, and the weather that may or may not be in your way. So it's not like you can't always measure distance like that. How much does it cost for me to do it? Yeah, so it's a little bit on the expensive side. I'm just gonna be straightforward here. It's $180 an hour for the plane and it's $65 an hour for the instructor. It's probably gonna cost me around $15,000 I was expecting somewhere around $10,000 after doing the research. You know, whatever it costs is whatever it costs. It's, it's part of the dream. And I have to constantly tell myself, Josh, it's not about return on investment. It's about doing something that you want to do every day. You're doing your best trying to make this part of your business. And hopefully people will come. Hopefully people will be interested. Hopefully I can get some sponsors like, like Bose. They have headsets that you can get. I should reach out to Bose or Foreflight. Uh, Garmin for the GPS systems, I should reach out, but I don't know if they'd be willing to do it. I've never seen someone start and finish pilot school so that they could take solo adventures. I've only seen people already flying and recording it after they learn. I haven't seen the whole process. I kind of wish that I did this with like my co boot camp where I started before and where I ended up after. But yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna cost a lot of money. All right, so here's some fun facts about airplanes that I thought that you might want to know. I was like, so can we fly this airplane to like Salt Lake International Airport or wherever? Could we go to like Atlanta International Air Airport, like the busiest airport in the world? He was like, yeah, you could go to basically any airport you want. You just ask on the radio if they'll let you in and get clearance and they'll let you in. And if you do that and you have your own stuff, no TSA. I, I imagine you'd have to go through customs if you went international, but generally TSA is for like Delta and all the airlines. But if you do it yourself, you don't have to deal with any of that. You just go to the general aviation area of the airport. And I guess you don't even see it. I've never even seen the general aviation side of the, any of the international airports. All you see is the big Delta jets coming in all the time. Or an, I guess another like fun fact and misconception that I had was that I thought it was really expensive to store airplanes. I, I thought it was super expensive to get a hangar. I thought it was gonna cost like $600 a month. The hangars at the airport where I'm learning how to fly is $75 a month and they're huge the whole solo hanger just for you 75 bucks a month if you go get personal storage at some Joe Blow storage place you get like a 10 by 10 room and it's $300 a month you know oh all right so uh you guys hear that airplane that just went by here's another misconception about that it's not actually that loud it sounds a lot louder out here standing on the ground I would say it's probably as loud as like a push lawnmower if not even like I'd say the push lawnmower might even be louder 
than being inside the plane when the engine's running. Oh, and then when you watch videos about planes and pilots and stuff like that, and you hear the, the audio and there, it sounds really kind of high pass filter, that's exactly what it sounds like when you have the headset on. So I thought that was kind of neat. I was expecting it to be more clear, I guess, more bassy, more like original voice. Also, I used to wonder, like if I'm just talking right now, can everyone hear what I'm saying? Nope. Um, so, you know, on the joysticks, there's like the little red button. You, you, like everyone's like, oh, the red button is to like shoot missiles, right? Obviously. No, actually the red button, you just, you press it down to talk on the radio. That's it. Oh, here's another thing. I'm sure you've been flying in um, and you've looked at the runway right before you, you know, touch down and you see all the lights on the runway. Well, there's four lights on the left side of most runways and those lights are telling you if you're too high or you're too low when you're coming into land. So if they're all white, you're way too high. If they're all red, you're way too low. If you have two red and two white, that's you know pretty good. That's right where you want to be. I thought that was a pretty cool fun fact. I was like, what are all these lights? How did like what are they for? Um, and then I guess the final thing that I want to talk about is I've convinced my instructor Nick to let my dad come along once a week so he can film and get really good shots. And uh, I'm really hoping I can make this like a high quality documentary series where I recap everything that I've learned and fun things that I might share with an audience that either A, doesn't know a lot about aviation, but is kind of curious, or B, doesn't really care, but the fun facts are enough to be like, huh, learn something new today. So you can walk away with something. I don't understand how it sounds so loud because it's so quiet. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. I'm certainly really enjoying this. I need to figure out a way to, I guess, better monetize it because it kind of costs a lot. But um, anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next week in the flight log.